Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today we are using the long, what is it, waves, long waves, borders, <laughs> and um, the Sip Sip Hooray along with the um, matching dies, Sandy Shores, and then Raise a Glass. I showed you this super cute little, um, wait, I can't remember what it is, perfectly paired, per fresh, freshly picked, I don't know what I'm talking about, freshly picked. Um, but I didn't end up using it because it did not occur to me that like the size of the fruit would be far too large to sit next to my little drinks. Um, so if you watched my last video where we talked about the beach technique, um, you know that I had to go back in and kind of remake the uh, background because I didn't record it. And so because I had this background just sitting on my desk all done, I decided that I was going to go ahead and use it to make another beach themed card because who doesn't love the beach? So since I had my background already done, masking was not really an option for me. So I had to kind of stamp and then I chose to fussy cut them out. But they all have matching dies except for the bar, which you can see that I'm drawing here. Um, this is just super simple straight lines um, that you can do here. I'm kind of laying out uh, where I want things to go so that way... I know uh, what all to stamp out and since I am going to be fussy cutting them um, I'm just going to stamp them all on the same page so you can see all of the coloring super easy. I did go back in and I used the EK Success journaling pens but they are um, discontinued uh, so I would rec recommend the Copic Multiliners or the Microns um, since we are going to be coloring with Copic markers or you know any alcohol based markers that you would have. Stamping these down with the uh, Copic Safe ink from Hero Arts. And then I wanted to stamp the ice in the cup, but I didn't want it to be full strength. And so I'm going to do second generation stamping here. I just have a scrap piece of paper that was laying on my desk. Lord knows there's a lot of things laying on my desk, so this was not hard to find. I'm going to stamp it down one time full strength, and then I'm going to stamp it again um, without re-inking in the glass. Then from here, I decided that I wanted the bar to have a little bit more detail. So I'm just going through and I am using a smaller nib. So I outlined the bar uh, using a 0.35 and I'm doing my lines with a 0.25. I'm not putting down a lot of pressure here. Uh, I'm fine if they look skippy or um, more worn. I don't need them all to look the same. In order to save myself some Copic ink, I am going to be using uh, Distress ink in the background to kind of fill up the um, the the bar just so that I don't have to cover the entire thing, which I'm going to be honest, I probably do end up filling the entire thing, but I don't have to go over the entire thing in the beginning with my lightest color. So I'm just using Antique Linen, um, what is the other one? Brush Corduroy, and then I Gathered Twigs or Vintage Photo. They're pretty similar, so one or the other will do. Um, I don't really know what's going on with my camera here, and I don't know why it is getting blurry, uh, so I apologize for that. I should probably check my settings, because sometimes Peanut gets in here and plays, and, um, you know, presses buttons he shouldn't press. So once that's done, I am going to go ahead and remove that purple tape that I was using as a mask. Um, you could use Post-it Notes or you know, whatever you have, or not even worry about it. I just had done all of my stamping super close together, so I didn't want to risk um, turning my oranges or my lime brown. Uh, I'm just going to go in and do like a little bit of a wood grain texture for the bar. Um, the only thing to note here as far as coloring is underneath the lip of this countertop will be darker, so make sure that you're adding plenty of shading there so that you can give it some depth and dimension. Um, but other than that, there really isn't a right or a wrong way to do it. I'm doing, uh, you know, a couple of little streaks. You could add swirls here. I have a whole video on how to do a wood grain background with Copic markers if you've never seen that. Um, you know, for sure check that out. But uh, yeah, just going to be doing some some pretty simple Copic coloring here. Um, you know how it rolls. I'll, I'll make comments as I go. If you're new here... Um, I like to start with my lightest color and I work from my lightest out to my darkest and then my darkest back out to my lightest. Um, when I'm doing the flicking, uh, I like to make sure that not all of the lines are the same length so it doesn't build up like this wall of color and everything kind of blends in a little better. This one in particular, since I'm trying to add so much texture to it, I'm making some of my flicks a little bit longer and then some of them I'm even just putting right in the center of the boards um, since it is, you know, more of like a wood um, look. So yeah, a um, couple of things to note. 
I totally loved, 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 loved hearing um, what your guys' song were for your wedding. Um, there was a lot of uh, standouts. Uh, Etta James, at last, for sure, was a standout. Um, I saw a couple of them um, that were um, Elvis, Can't, F uh, Can't Help Falling in Love with You, um, which if you're a child of the 90s, you probably attribute that song to UB40, but it's not them. It is Elvis. Um, just, it was so fun just seeing what songs you guys picked uh, to kind of, you know, have for your, your special day. We still have not selected a song, but I will be sure to share that with you once we do. And um, yeah, so that was super fun and, and interesting to listen to. The other thing I wanted to make mention of is that video was part of a blog hop. And oh, speaking of the blog hop, that discount code is still good. So if you have not been over to Honeybee, there is a 10% off discount code. I'll make sure that I include it in the YouTube description below. And that's good and through August 13th. So if you haven't been to the shop yet, um, you know, and you or there's things that you're looking to pick up, make sure you get the added benefit of the 10% off. Also, um, in that blog hop, there is a $100 um, gift card that they're giving away. So if you missed that, go go check it out before you don't have the opportunity to win anymore. Um, for the glasses, because of the shape of the glasses, I'm just really adding a little bit of shading where it indents to kind of highlight that indent. Um, but other than that, really just adding shading from the left and the right and leaving the highlight in the center. Um, anyway, that video is part of a blog hop. And when you're part of a blog hop, a video hop or whatever, um, you do have people who don't normally watch your videos come along because they want the opportunity to win and get the inspiration and um, all of that stuff. And so when that happens, um, it's by far and away when I get the most comments about how I'm too chatty and they don't want to hear about my life and my videos are unwatchable and could I please just shut up and craft. Um, nobody, I don't think, well, I think I had one lady once who was that abrupt about it. Um, but those, those comments do make their way into the video. And there are some of you, which I totally love and adore you for, who, who feel the need to, um, defend me. And I, I do, I love you for it. I know, um, I know who my audience is and I know that story time is half the reason that people are here and the card making is just a, a, an added benefit and that I'm, I'm good with that. Um, but I'm also, it does not bother me when these people make their comments. Like I read their comments, I, you know, may make a comment or two out loud to myself, but I try to be pretty respectful in, in my response because, um, it doesn't cost me anything to be a little bit kind and I have no idea what they're going through. Um, I'm also feel like if your life is so unhappy and so sad um, that you feel the need to comment on free YouTube comment like content that you do not have to pay for that you don't like the way that I'm doing it. Um, then you probably have more problems going on than, um, you know, me being mean and nasty to you back. Even though I'm not going to pretend like I don't think that. Like, there are sometimes I think, like, get over yourself. Um, but for the most part, they really genuinely don't bother me. Um, people make their comments. I, As you know, I've told you um, before, like, when somebody responds to your comment on YouTube, it's me. It's just me. I'm the only person who's commenting back to, you know what I mean? The little hearts. I heart every single one of those. Um, you know, when I comment back onto it, it, it's me. It's not like there's anybody being paid to uh, surf my channel. Um, so I, do, I, I comment back and typically I will tell them there's plenty of other YouTubers that do not have my style um, that you can learn from and, or they can mute it. Um, or, you know, fill in the blank, whatever it is. Um, and I'm, I'm good with that. Like, I, I, I tell them that and, ever, you know, and, and we all just move on with our lives. So please don't feel like you need to, um, to come to my defense, even though, like I said, I do, I do uh, appreciate it. Um, I just, I don't want anybody to get into a situation where somebody gets mean or nasty with you because you're trying to defend me or my channel. Um, like, and a lot of these people who are making these comments are really just looking for a fight. So back to the card quickly. 
Um, so in the little um, like rocks glass, I decided to go with a like an orangish yellow. Typically in these types of glass glasses, you're going to have um, like a bourbon or, um, you know, something that is a little more of a hard liquor served over ice. Um, I'm not a drinker, so I really can't come up with anything besides that. Um, but I didn't want to go brown because I had so much brown with the sand and so much brown with the bar. Um, so I decided to go orange and I think that that worked out pretty well. Um, and I just colored right over the ice because as you all know, ice is clear and you would be, you know, it would take on the color of whatever it's in. Um, so with those two things noted, um, as far as like, here's here's how I ended up making this card and I had to heavily edit it. I'm not going to lie. Um, so I don't know if you guys have like crafty friends, crafty girlfriends. I've talked to you before about how I go to retreat twice a year and hang out with my crafty friends. And because Rona is ruining everything, um, that is not something we were able to do. Typically we go in the spring and in the fall and we're not able to do either one of them. So, um, we have been doing like crafty zoom meetings um so that we can all kind of get together and see each other um here i'm adding some shading to just like the clear parts of the glass with some light blue and i did add a, just a little bit to the um ice as well but so these zoom meetings are um you know we've we've done two of them so far and they're super fun and it's a great way to kind of connect with each other and so if you have crafty friends I think zoom you have to pay for after an hour um and lord knows I'm crafting for longer than an hour I mean boo yes I am um but like google me like the ones that are free and give you the option to do that I would encourage you it's so it just fills your spirit guys it just makes my heart so happy to see my friends note on this little rocks glass I did get a little bit of yellow and in order to kind of mask that I did add a little bit of a darker blue which I felt was fine because typically those glasses are a little bit darker at the bottom and then I am outlining that and then adding um, some highlights with the white gel pen so um yeah I just I it just is so nice to see everybody and kind of connect and recharge your batteries and talk to people who understand you know how you are with crafting or how is this big part of your life um so I would just if you have friends that are in the craft world that you have made friends with online whether you've met them in real life or not I would just encourage you to kind of get together and lift each other up it's amazing how just one um little zoom meeting for a couple of hours can kind of just recharge your your batteries um, I am, like I said earlier, going to fussy cut all of these out. The glasses are a little tricky because the stems are a little thin. Um, but with fussy cutting, I recommend, you know, cutting with your dominant hand and then holding the paper with your left hand. Use your, well, my left hand. Sorry. You may be left-handed and then your non-dominant hand is going to be right. I apologize. Um, but whatever your non-dominant hand is, turn the paper with that hand um, and hold your scissors straight. So, um, but yeah, just, it was really great to just see everyone. And so because I had this background that was already done on my desk, um, I decided to just go ahead and do the coloring to make uh, another little scene card. This footage probably, I mean, you have a little bit of deja vu, looks familiar. It does look familiar because it's the same footage for the back, how I did the background from my last video. And it is the same footage because I didn't film when I made the other one. I only filmed making the waves and the foam portion. And I thought to myself at the time, I really did. I genuinely thought to myself, you're going to be sad that you didn't film this because you are going to need it if you ever use this to make a card. And then the very next day, the very next day, I had that problem. But I figured this is the same, um, this is the same way that I did uh, the other one. I used that waves border as a mask with my masking paper. And then I'm just using um, Salty Ocean, Blueprint Sketch, um, do, 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 Chip Sapphire, oh, Mermaid Lagoon and Chip Sapphire. So that they would get darker as it got away from the shore, lighter as it was closer to the shore. Um, and so this is, yeah, you're, this looks familiar because it is familiar because if you watch my videos every time they come out, you've already seen this. Um, and you're going to see the same footage for how I did the foam. 
yeah, both of them, the same Z's. Um, but if you're here for story time, this won't bother you a bit because I'll still be talking through the whole thing and it'll be a completely different thing that we're talking about. Um, so yeah, so I did the, the craft meet, which was so fun and so nice to see the girls. And um, yeah, it just really, especially when you're a person who doesn't have a lot of people in your life who understand card making or, um, you know, well, why do you spend so much time coloring? Why do you spend so much time painting? Why do you spend so much time fill in the blank? Like, because it makes me happy and it fills my soul and God created me to create. And um, it's no different with the, um, like the furniture that we have been refinishing. Um, it, it's, it's a nice break and, but it still gives me an opportunity to create, which I love. So now that I'm done with the water portion, I'm going to take the other half of my mask, flip that upside down, and then do the sand portion um, using those same colors that I used to do the bar. Oh, and if you missed it in the last video, the little tip of the Tombow Mono Multi-Glue, if one of your masks is moving, um, you can just put a little drop of Tombow Mono Multi-Glue. And when I say little, I mean little, because um, if you put it down wet, it will dry permanently. So you have to tap it on your finger a few times to make sure that it's completely dry before you stick it back down. Um, but yeah, it just it's very difficult um, when you don't have people in your life who understand and even like I was talking about doing the, the furniture is filling that need for me um, to create and to make um, and that sense of accomplishment when it's when it's over. And I think everybody enjoys that. I was talking to one of the girls I work with the other night because um, I'm cross-stitching um, and her mom cross-stitches. And so we were talking about it and I said, do you, you know, do anything crafty? And she was like, no, I'm terrible at it. That's not true. Um, so for the stamp, I know that I described it the last time, but I got to do it again because this is a new video, y'all. Um, so I am just kind of rubbing my ink pad on there uh, before I go in and start tapping it on. I started with um, the brushed corduroy and then added in like dops, little like dabs and, you know, stuff of the antique linen and um, gathered twigs. Um, you just want to be very careful when you do this because you don't want just a square blob because it will stamp like a square blob. So make sure that you're going, you know, kind of back over that to blend everything in. I'm going to flip my paper upside down, use a scrap piece of paper, hold it in place with one hand uh, and apply pressure with the other and then switch those hands so that everything is getting a good amount of pressure to stamp onto my card. And I still love this, still love it, love it, love it, love it, because um, it makes the best sand, it really does. And now we're going to get into the um, making of the foam with the white acrylic paint. Um, again, I do mix water with one of them and then just use the straight full strength paint with the other. Um, be aware of how much water you're using because this is not watercolor paper. And then I use a stiff bristle brush. This is just a super cheap one that came in one of uh, Peanuts um, paint brush like the mix variety pack that I had bought him. Um, but you can certainly you know buy these by themselves. Um, but yeah, they, they, I found that this just works the best. And then I'm just going to tap that on there um, first with the one that's mixed with uh, water because then it's more transparent. Um, and then with the full strength white so that it does create like that true white kind of foam. Um, and then we're going to get to building the card. Yeah. Uh, but so like she just said, she she's like, I'm terrible at crafts. And I don't think that that's true. And I don't think that that's true for anybody. I think that a lot of us, and I myself fall into this category sometimes, um, when we sit down to do something, we want it to be good the very first time that we do it. Um, oh, here I'm adding that white um, Wink of Stella. It comes out clear, but then it dries white and adds just some shimmer to the foam. You could certainly use stickles for this or any other type of glitter that you have. Um, I, this is just what I had on hand, so that's what I used. Um, ooh, bumped the desk. My apologies. Um, so, um, I just, I think that all of us want to be good at it the first time that we do it. And when we aren't, um, we're hesitant to try again. And if you don't try again, then you will always think that you're terrible at it. And like the 
the practicing, the growth, um, is like your journey of, of what you're doing is really the part that matters. And you can go back, my Flickr still available. I've told you guys this before, um, to go back and look at where I started and it wasn't here. That is for sure, y'all. It was not here um, because I learned things and I learned what I liked and what I didn't like and what worked and what didn't work. And so I learned through that process to where I am now and I'm still learning and there's still new techniques that I want to try and different ways to to do things and, you know, changing of my style. Um, and so just don't give up. Don't just be like, I'm bad at this and I'm giving up. So back to the card. Um, I did want my lemon to sit on my glass, but I was having a hard time making that happen uh, because the back rim of the glass, like the lime wouldn't fit over the back rim of the glass. So I did end up just using my, um, like my little tonic craft knife to cut a hole in that. And then I trimmed the lime in the middle. Now you would see through part of it because it is a clear glass. So that's what you saw me doing with the YG03. And then I think I brought in like a C3 to just finish out that black line. So it looked like you could see the lime through it. And then I'm using my fun. Isn't this so fun? I just love it. I love it. Um, my, uh, honeybee stamps precision tip glue um and it has a little glue holder which sits just right in front of where i'm filming and it's super handy to just reach over and grab um and i love the little tip on it um because i do glue tinier things here i'm just going to add in the umbrella stem which i previously cut off i kind of wish i would have used like a gray pen here so the black wouldn't have been so stark but decisions were made and and it's not the worst thing ever i don't think it's super noticeable when you're looking at it and the um the little accessories i did pop up on foam as well as the little rocks glass because I wanted it to sit in front of the other glass. I originally put the umbrella on a little bit too low and so I just picked that up and scooted it up so that it looked like it was sitting on top of the glass instead of like in the glass. <laughs> um, but yeah, so just don't, just be, be um, gracious with yourself. Give yourself grace because we do it all the time with other people. Give them the benefit of the doubt and um, are very generous with offering other people grace for the most part. But we are less likely to do that for ourselves. And I would just encourage you to please give yourself grace and give yourself this opportunity to learn and be okay with the fact that it's not going to be perfect the first time. Um, you know, like the dining room table, for instance. Like it took me so many steps um, from the beginning to end and it's because I had no idea what I was doing and it was the first time that I ever did it and I kept having to go back and redo things and go back and redo things and if at some point I would have just been like you know what I'm not good at it I'm just going to give up I wouldn't have um, this beautiful newly stained like it looks brand new dining room set um, that was my parents that now I'm super proud to have in my house and, um, you know, it looks like a completely different set from what they had. And, but if I would have given up, I wouldn't have it. So just even when you think it's going south, um, you're learning something. There's a reason for the process. So I heat embossed my sentiment, popped it up on foam. And then that's pretty much the whole card. I did add some glitters. I don't know where that footage went, but I did add some glitters to my drinks and my fruit. And then that's it. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Like I said, that discount code will be below if you're watching on YouTube. And I will catch you all in the next video. Bye.